If we're gonna do Italian beef, you're gonna have to go to Chicago first. So we're packing our bags, going to Chicago to find the greatest Italian beef. But not without the greatest recipes from this cookbook, which is my book. And it's available on Amazon and it's a great gift for the holidays. It's coming right around the corner. Link in the description. Like that? It's pretty good, huh? Practice that. <coughs> Been here for two days. Already trying to figure out how to move here, even though I just bought a house in Austin. Good job, Josh. Look, the architecture's beautiful. The vibes are immaculate. The serotonin level's so high. But let's talk about this Italian beef. We're here to have the proper, most original Italian beef that we can get. Consume, enjoy, observe. We're gonna go back, make it as traditional and authentically as we can in our abode. So with all that being said, let's begin. We started at Portillo's, the Italian beef spot that seems to cover, well, every street corner in Illinois. We're starting here for a reason, Portillo's. Now you're thinking, Josh, that's a chain. What are you doing there? Look, there's something very special about Portillo's and it's the fact that, albeit there are so many locations, it's one of the few places that Chicagoans can know that they're gonna get a consistent Italian beef anywhere, pretty much in all of Illinois. I know this sandwich is juicy because it's like wet. When the bag is wet, uh, <laughs> my peeper. Jesus Christ, how do I eat this? That's nuts. It's like salty, it's acidic from the pickles. Fatty, part eating a sandwich and part drinking a sandwich. You ever drank a sandwich? This is honestly fire. If I lived near one of these, I would go here every day. It's not like a million flavors compounded over one. It's a bunch of very simple flavors that are focused on and emphasized to be as maximally powerful as possible. That's all there is to it. It's a great sandwich. But let's move on to our next. Next, we checked out Buona Beef, which honestly was kind of disappointing. It's a lot less fatty, it's more dry. There's less like juice to it all. This isn't quite rounding out my experience. So moving on from that, it's like a two or three in my book. So we decided let's end our journey with something truly special. We're out here in Chicago at the real one and only Mr. Beef. You've seen this before. Where have I seen it? Oh my goodness. Oh, like the show The Bear? Hello. Stupa Cavon, let's go. I don't know what that means. It should look like this. It should be like ripping. <laughs> look at this. Glistening, 10.20 in the morning, and everyone is here eating. It's a beautiful day. <laughs> Good lord. I get it now. Hands down, this is the best one we had. Out of all the places we went, if you take a bite of this, your lips should be quivering. I feel the energy and the culture that they were trying to show off in the bear. One of the reasons why I love the show, and even the taste of this, the look, the ambiance, all the photos on the wall. I mean, there's like a real culture here. I feel like, I feel like I'm living it right now. And it was at this moment I knew I needed to meet this beef's maker. So funny story, we actually completely left the city only to somehow magically be put in touch with and be given the opportunity to meet one of the greatest Chicagoans since Michael Jordan. Oh yeah, that's definitely him. Yo, pleasure to meet such you, a pleasure. Really is, man. What's your name? Mike, Mike. Mike, it's okay we roll on this? Are you cool with that? Yeah. Yeah, the owner of Mr. Beef, Christopher Zucchera. Everybody. Hello. Once I took my first bite of that sandwich, the only thing I wanted to talk about was Mr. Beef. Italian beef is our thing in Chicago. It's not pizza, it's not hot dogs. I was practically born and raised here in this restaurant. A piece of real Chicago history. Yeah, if you ever come to Chicago and you don't come to this place, you're making a mistake. People would, hold on, no, no, no. I, do you mind if I do kind of business while yeah, like, you're we're good. doing yeah. this? I'm actually technically closed, but I'll make you whatever you want, buddy. You guys want fries? Uh, yeah. yeah. What's a drink, guys? Water and a squirt. All right, what are you, fucking 70 years old? People would come into this restaurant and they would eat like three or four times a week and then he'd tell me how my beef sandwich sucked. You ate here three times already this week. I don't care if you hate me or you don't like me. I don't really give a fuck. I'm lucky I wake up every day with a fucking smile, so I'm just like, eh. First thing I do when I come here in the morning is I eat a beef sandwich. You hear that? How many fries, guys? One or two? I mean, I'm very lucky, man. I wouldn't have known about this place, like, without the bear. The director and I, we go back to first grade together. Is it great, guys? Amazing. All right, right on. Thank yeah. you. I didn't talk to him for like three years. He came in and you know, he's like, yeah, buddy, I, I'm, I'm gonna shoot this pilot. It's gotta be here. You're gonna be okay with it? Yeah, go ahead. I'll give it to you guys for free. Just do what you gotta do. Unbelievably grateful for what Store did. Immortalized this place. I've never seen the show. Whoa. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> I've never watched it. People come in here and they're like, hey, chef. Like, no, 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 don't do that. One guy called me an asshole for it recently. But I also said on national TV that Chicago had pizza. I don't care. So everybody has to put all their bullshit 
outside. That's what I think a lot of the bear is about, really. You I heard that? Just you leave your up. ego at the door and you bring the beef in. Of course, we want to thank Chris for talking with us, but honestly, we went in just to meet and ask a few questions and ended up talking about life for over two hours. One thing is for certain, after this whole experience, I think I know exactly what needs to be done. Listen, you ain't got no sandwich with no bread, and you best believe we are making it too. So most Italian beef are served on what seems to be called a long French roll. To make, add two cups or 450 grams of water at 95 degrees Fahrenheit to the bowl of a stand mixer, followed by one and a half tablespoons or 18 grams of instant yeast and two tablespoons or 18 grams of granulated sugar. Mix to combine, let this sit for a minute or two, then add two tablespoons or 24 grams of vegetable oil. You're gonna add four and three quarters of a cup or 800 grams of bread flour, which I would recommend adding in two parts. Obviously the first half, look on your spiral thingy. With the mixing on low speed, let it mix till combined, followed by two and a half teaspoons or 12 grams of fine sea salt. The second half of your flour, if that seems a little dry, you can always add a little extra splash of water, should be in a good spot. Now let that mix till smooth for about three to five minutes. Place it into a grease bowl, cover with plastic wrap and let that rise for one to one and a half hours or until doubled and bonus. Lovingly push every little molecule of life out of it. Place it under a lightly floured work surface and divide into four even pieces. Form those into light balls and place it aside covered with greased plastic wrap. Rest at room temp for 15 minutes. Once it's rested, you pull it out, dust both sides, flatten it out into an oval. Fold that oval, pinch the seam shut, roll your girthy boy into a 16 by three inch log. Place it on a baking sheet lined with parchment paper. Repeat with another, place that evenly spaced apart on the same baking sheet. Listen, do not do more than two loaves per baking sheet. Repeat with your remaining two loaves, cover with greased plastic wrap and proof at room temp for 45 minutes. While that's proofing, preheat your oven to 375 Fahrenheit or 190 Celsius. Give that a light spray of water. Optionally, you can slash the top of your dough with a sharp knife at a diagonal at three to four intervals across the whole length of your dough. Pop them into your oven and bake for 25 to 30 minutes or until a deep golden brown beautiful loaf emerges. I mean, look at this thing. Now cool completely, cut off the tips and divide into two evenly sized pieces and set to the side. The rest of the sandwich is pretty simple, but we need to address something you cannot forget. Jardinera. Get a medium sauce pot, add one and a half cups or 360 milliliters of white distilled vinegar, three quarters of a cup or 175 milliliters of water, one and a half tablespoons or 16 grams of kosher salt, and three tablespoons or 45 grams of granulated sugar. Heat that over medium high until nearly boiling and it's steaming hot. Then separately in a large container, you're gonna add four banana peppers sliced, one to two large carrots, peeled and sliced into rounds, five ribs of celery cut into half inch cubes, four serrano chilies sliced, and then add your hot pickle liquid over your vegetables and then mix in one cup or 240 milliliters of extra virgin olive oil. Follow that with a petit sachet which you can do by first laying down a small layer of cheesecloth, and to that you'll add seven sprigs of fresh oregano, one tablespoon or nine grams of black peppercorns, one tablespoon or eight grams of celery seeds, wrap it all up nice and tight, tie it together with kitchen twine, pop that in there too, press them down so they stay submerged, let those sit until room temperature, and guess what? You got a classy jardinera. Now before we can talk about the beef, we need to talk about beef stock. First you need to mix a four pounds or 1.8 kilos of oxtail, and three pounds or 1.3 kilos of beef soup bones. Place that on a foil lined baking sheet, spray them generously with cooking spray, pop into an oven preheated to 475 Fahrenheit, ideally with a convection setting, until deeply browned, about 30 to 45 minutes. Pop all those into a large pot, along with two onions quartered, three ribs of celery rough chopped, one head of garlic cut in half, and two carrots rough chopped, and one tablespoon or nine grams of whole peppercorns. Add just enough water to cover the bones, set over medium high, and once it begins to boil, reduce to low and simmer for three to four hours, or until reduced enough to taste mad good. Anyway, remove the solids from your broth, straight through a large fine mesh strainer, and that's a lovely gorgeous beef stock that Papa would now for the moment we've all been waiting for, the thing that puts the beef in Italian beef, which is uh, the beef. You'll need a beef top round roast that's around four pounds or 1.8 kilos. Season that bad boy heavily with salt and pepper to taste. Then get a large Dutch oven, at least seven to eight quarts ideally. Add enough oil to coat the bottom of the pot, set over medium high, and once it's nearly smoking, add your beef and sear for two to three minutes or until deeply browned. Repeat on all sides. Then just leave that bad boy in the pot. Add enough of your fresh beef stock to nearly submerge your beef. To that broth, add one teaspoon or two grams of red pepper flakes, one tablespoon or seven grams of ground paprika, one tablespoon or eight grams of celery seeds, five whole heads of garlic cut in half. Yeah, I didn't misspeak, five. One onion quartered, leaving some of the root bottom attached so it doesn't, you know, fall apart in there. Now this isn't traditional, but I threw in a little bit of mushroom soup base powder for that pizzazz. One bay leaf and four sprigs of fresh oregano. Bring that up to a boil over medium high. Once it begins to boil, reduce heat to low, cover with the lid and place it in an oven that's been heated to 350 Fahrenheit. Braise that for around one hour or until the internal temperature reaches around 130 to 135 Fahrenheit. Then take the beef out, reserve absolutely everything everything and leave in the fridge overnight. Now, once your boof is chilled, slice that bad boy as thinly as you possibly can. I would highly recommend a deli meat slicer. You don't have one? Well, uh, I don't know what to tell you, but look at these beefy ribbons. I mean, come on. Now, once you've sliced all your beef, strain your braising liquid that you cooked the beef in into a large deep pan or a medium pot, whatever works. Heat that till steamy hot, but not boiling. Then add all of your sliced beef 
back to the broth, and this is the gateway to arguably one of the most succulent, beautiful bath times you'll ever see. Assembly is the last pillar, which is also very specific. First off, grab a roll. Cut it in half, leaving one side attached, and toss into a 350-degree oven for five to six minutes. Once that sucker is hot, use tongs to grab your meat and aggressively stuff your buns with your hot meat. Boy, that does not sound right. Once it's filled to the brim, add a few generous spoonfuls of your Jardinera, making sure some of that oil and the pickling juices come along with each spoonful. Really max out that juice. Now for my favorite part, the dipping. You can fully dip, half dip, whatever. I like it with both ends dipped, dunking deeply into the broth. Then immediately wrap up your sandwich and you're ready. Now we tear into what might be my new favorite sandwich of all time, and I'll show you why. I couldn't be more excited. Look at this. Cross section. Wow. I know Christopher is watching. Christopher, the Mr. B. I think he'd be proud. Listen, the juice, the flavors, they're all there. The pickle, juicy. I mean, it is ridiculously juicy. You're half drinking this sandwich. I really think we hit the mark, but we have a true Chicagoan actually here. And he goes by the name of Vic One. Wow, there he is. That's right. Here's your Italian beef. I've been waiting for Josh to make this for two years now. I'm glad it's finally happening. I'm so nervous. There's only one way to do it. <laughs> that is an Italian beef. That is insane. This is the best way to eat beef. Like, you need to do it fully done. Flavor overload. Oh, we found Belle Delphine's bath water. Pano, what are you doing? That's an approved Chicago Italian beef. Give it the respect and juice it up. But do you wanna know what else is juiced up? B-roll.